Okay, listen up. This is First Five, where I look for games you can enjoy over a weekend or in bite-sized pieces. I play a game for five hours and tell you what I think in five minutes. There are two questions I'm going to answer. Did I get something out of those five hours, and would I keep playing? Today's game is Fee. Fee is hard to define in a single sentence. It's a 3D platformer. And because it's a 3D platformer, of course, it's a collectathon, too. And because it's a collectathon, there's a heavy emphasis on exploring its environments. But it's also frequently a stealth game. And it also has Metroidvania elements, with new powers opening up sections of old areas. But Fee is also a curious fit in the platformer genre. It is unquestionably a platformer, but unlike your Marios or your Super Meat Boys, this game isn't concerned with broad, expressive movement systems or pinpoint accurate mechanical challenges. There are very few pitfalls for you to stumble into, and the number of objects that pose active threats are uncommon and easily dealt with. Your jump is fairly short and limited, and you mostly get around using Fee's tree climbing and gliding abilities instead. The tree climbing mechanic in particular felt really fresh to me. Basically, as soon as you're out of the tutorial area, Fee gains the ability to climb any tree he comes across in the game, and most of the game's platforming is constructed out of trails of trees that you have to navigate your way across. It's a really simple mechanic that's by no means revolutionary, but the way it and some of the other mobility options in the game are implemented gives Fee an ever-present sense of verticality that you don't experience in a lot of other platformers. You are almost always, in one way or another, moving upwards. All that verticality regularly rewards you with breathtaking views of the game's gorgeous, highly stylized environments, which are definitely one of the game's high points. Fee's forest is beautiful, and almost all the creatures living in it can only be described as adorable. And whoever animated these things deserves a goddamn medal, because the way they move and act instantly endears them to you. And seeing them in distress when the Silent Ones show up is a cheap, if extremely effective, way to tug at my heartstrings. What isn't cheap is the ending of Fee's main story, which I hit right at the 5 hour mark. I obviously won't spoil it, but the final action you take to complete Fee's story is beautiful, thematically immaculate, and left me sitting there speechless. This one moment alone made this game worth experiencing for me, and it's definitely the memory of this game that will stick with me years from now. But we're almost halfway through this video, and I haven't even gotten to talking about the game's core mechanic, singing. Fee is capable of learning songs from the forest's other denizens, which in turn allows him to communicate with his surroundings. Doing so lets him do anything from convince a bird to let him hitch a ride, to open up a flower that will act like a giant fan and blow him upwards. Overall, the songs are a cute mechanic that aesthetically complements the rest of the game. Mechanically, they're... fine, and do what they need to do, but like almost everything else in Fee, it's the feel of using the songs, the way the mechanic forces you to empathize with other beings in the forest, that is far more noteworthy than anything they might bring mechanically to the genre. So let's get to the verdict. Can you get an enjoyable experience out of the first five hours? Between the gorgeous visuals and Fee's unique rhythm when you're moving through the forest, I would say yes. But even beyond that, you must experience this game's ending. It only takes five hours to get there, and it is so perfect. Would I keep playing? Personally, after beating the main story, I might boot this game up one or two more times in a year. But I think for someone with different priorities than mine, there's a lot of fun to be had here. Fee is a game you need to be in a very specific mood for, and it's not a mood I'm in very often. But there is a certain type of gamer that is going to be absolutely entranced by this game. It isn't going to present you with much of a challenge, and it's not going to demand any rigorous mastery of its systems. This is a game that instead gets by with impeccable style. It's a zen game, something you don't have to think too hard about while you screw around for a few hours after a long day of work. This becomes doubly true once you clear the game. Once you complete an area's main objectives, the Silent Ones depart, and with them, almost all danger leaves the forest entirely, leaving you to wander around and gather collectibles in complete peace. In general, you spend more time leisurely collecting random stuff than you do saving the forest from the silent ones. And depending on what kind of gamer you are, that's either going to sound incredibly monotonous, or like an absolute dream come true. Fee paints a spellbinding landscape that you can get lost in, and has a mechanically driven narrative that truly resonated with me in its final moments. The only question on whether to buy it or not is if that's enough for you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode of First Five. 
If you did, like, comment, subscribe, find me on Twitter and Facebook, you know the drill. But the greatest show of affection you can give is to share this video around wherever you can. Fee by Zoink Games is available on PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and the PC for $20. The origin link is in the description below. I'll see you all next week.